Today I'm going to react to something a little bit different from what I've been reacting to. Um, it's called Extinct Animals of Ancient History, and it's by the Budget Museum. Um, I actually have this thing where I want to learn at least one new thing a day. Um, I definitely learn more than one new thing a day, though, just because of my, that hunt to learn something new and then you kind of get caught up in the information. I'm just kind of an information, just like suction. So videos like this is something you'll probably see on my channel a lot, just because I think it's fascinating. And I know a lot of people do too. I know a lot of reaction videos stray away kind of from history, but I'm actually a history buff. So you're gonna see a lot of history on this channel. So if you're into that, please hit subscribe. Um, hit subscribe, turn the bell button on or whatever. This is literally the first time I've said this. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I am definitely going to be reacting to a lot of historical things. I find it fascinating. I was in school for history, but I was like, I don't know if I can do anything with it, really. My dream job is like being a museum curator. That would be like the sickest job for me. I don't know why, but... Anywho, let's just get into it. I'm excited. Extinct animals of ancient history. Honestly, one of the worst things about liking cool animals is the burden of knowing you've missed out on most of them. Like, no offense to all the cool animals who exist in the present, but man, we have lost so much. Now, I'm not asking for much here. I understand how silly it is to want dinosaurs to still roam the earth after not being around for tens of millions of years. I will even compromise with the creatures who've endured and would go out with the Ice Age. But what really bugs me is the animals that are still supposed to be around. Ancient me humans really too. didn't know what they Same were missing. My husband. Even though they believed in a world consisting of gods and monsters, even in reality the natural world around them was much more wondrous than it is in the modern world. And that sucks. <laughs> Want to get mad with me and go over all the cool things you and I didn't get to see? I'm ready to rage. Well, hop on board and let's go back in time although not as far as we usually do. One thing to think of is animals who are still around, but who have gone extinct in a region. A great example of this would be lions. Lions in the present are really thought of as one of, if not the African animal. But for a long time, the modern lion, Panthera leo, had a huge range across the old world. Not only did it rule throughout most of Africa, but also much of the Middle East, India, and parts of Southwestern Europe. This, of course, is why lions show up many lions times in the folklore, in mythology, and art of these cultures, even though now lions are a continent away. Because in the villages of Mesopotamia or Greece, it wasn't impossible to hear rumors of lions nearby in the forest or stealing Farmer Joe's cattle. Personally, one mm -hmm. of my favorite pieces of lion-centric artwork is this palace relief from the Assyrian Empire, showing a beautifully muscled puking lion. That's being beautiful. Hunted. Of course, this art also highlights the main reason for the lion's decline. They are just so impressed with the humans that our first instinct is to brutally murder them. It is because of excessive hunting that these Eurasian lions would eventually disappear from the ancient mm -hmm. world as well. The famous Greek historian Herodotus tells us the lions were relatively common in most of Greece in 480 BCE, but were much less common by 300 BCE until finally vanishing from Greece by 100 BCE. The farther east you go, the longer lions survive. In most of the Near East, lions went extinct starting in the 10th century AD, yet they would still persist in some remote locations. Lion numbers would continue to decrease with the rise of gunpowder and firearms making it much easier to hunt them, and the final lions of the Near East would die out in the 1800s, with the last lion of Iraq being killed in 1918. In Iran, lions would persist in the foothills of the mighty Zagros mountain range where occasional sightings would happen throughout the early 1900s. Beautiful. And Look the last how beautiful part of lions that would is. be hunted down in 1963. India is a similar story to the rest of Asia, and as gunpowder spread, lion numbers dwindled. Yet lions yeah. would actually remain in India until, well, the present day. Yep, although it's not spoken of too much outside of India, there still exists in the Gir Forest. I learned the last something Asian new. Lions. I These did not know about the Asiatic because lions. The forest was the private hunting reserves of Indian rulers, who were kind enough not to slaughter all of them. The Asiatic lion differs in a few. I know about the Escobar hippopotamus, though. 
They are overall smaller than the African lion. Look it up if you don't. The mane it's pretty on the interesting. Males is darker and less developed than that of African specimens. <laughs> Meanwhile, this tuft at the end of the tail is larger. Another mm -hmm. odd difference is the fact that Asiatic lions have a flap of skin which runs along the belly, which an African lion lacks. Although this isn't really a scientific observation, uh, but to me, Asiatic lions all look just a bit beaten up and sad. Uh, I just want to send them a get well soon card. Aww. Of course, I would probably be pretty gloomy too if my kin were almost hunted to extinction. Yeah. Some are not as lucky as these Eurasian lions. Equally as recognizable as the lion is the elephant. Now, most people know that best. elephants are still found in Asia, specifically Southeast Asia. But there were many other subspecies of Asian elephant that have now gone completely extinct. Of these lost Asian elephants, the westernmost was the Syrian elephant. As the name suggests, this pachyderm was found throughout Syria, as well as Mesopotamia and parts of the Persian Gulf. The other thing distinguishing it from modern relatives was size. Measuring in at 3.5 meters at the shoulder, wow. the average Syrian elephant would have been as tall as the largest ever Indian elephants. The Syrian elephant would oh, seem to go the tallest of the Indian. By the year I wonder how BCE, it stacks up against the African elephants. But it is elephants. possible they make one final appearance in history before completely vanishing. If you know anything of ancient history, you might have heard of the general, Hannibal. Known as an ingenious tactician and the man who almost destroyed the Roman Republic, Maybe Hannibal's most memorable action was taking his army, which included several war elephants, through yep. the Alps. So those were the elephants. Of these Interesting. war elephants, most of which were of the African species. Okay. Possibly a smaller subspecies endemic to North Africa who died out during the Roman times, making them yet another example of a unique animal lost to time. One war elephant, Hannibal's personal elephant, was named Cirrus, and was described as a larger and braver than average elephant with a broken tusk. It is believed by some historians this large, well-trained elephant that was in could fact have been from a Syrian the Syrian one. subspecies, mm. further supported by the fact Surish translates to the Syrian. Although not completely confirmed, I think it would be a great footnote in history that the last Syrian that elephant would be cool. was a total that badass would be cool. in one of the most important wars of ancient history. On the other side of Asia, there was you also a elephants. unique population oh, of elephants. China, while being one of the oldest civilizations on the planet, is also one of its most ecologically diverse, with many species of large animals having been present in the country, including elephants. Nowadays, the few hundred Asian elephants of China are restricted to several parts of the country, Poor and are actually Asian on their way to making a recovery. But there's more ears. to the Chinese elephant tail. Ancient art and archaeological work has confirmed that there was another population of elephants in northern China who have gone completely extinct. It was assumed for a long time that these elephants were just another branch of the Asian elephants relegated to China, yet recent evidence may prove otherwise. Teeth from these elephants do not match those of the genus Elephas. As well, artwork from ancient China shows elephants with two, well, scientists call it fingers, but I'm more inclined to call it trunk nubs, instead of the Asian elephant's singular nub. The teeth and two nubs instead match the extinct animal Wait a also known as the straight-tusked elephant, instead of the Asian elephant's singular wise. Teeth from these elephants do not match those of the genus Elephas. As well, artwork from ancient China shows elephants with two, well, scientists call it fingers, but I'm more inclined to call it trunk nubs, instead of the Asian elephant's singular nub. The teeth and two nubs instead have no match idea the that extinct means. animal Helioloxodon, also known as the straight-tusked elephant. Besides their bulbous foreheads and long straight tusks, Paleoloxodon also differs from regular elephants for being history. even more massive, dwarfing even African bush elephants, and one the species evolution. was possibly the largest land mammal ever. Always Although completely not set in stone, the idea that these bizarre giant elephants who were once thought of as another Ice Age animal lost long before civilization we need more had information existed, meeting. alongside we need, meeting. historic we need more humanity, data would be as wondrous as mammoths living alongside the Egyptians. To actually reverse the pattern a bit, instead of animals who have gone extinct everywhere but Africa, here we have animals found everywhere else except Africa. That's right, bears. It appears I can't stop talking about bears on this channel, but I swear it's all a big coincidence and the, and the bears are not holding me hostage. Anyways, this bear is called the Atlas Bear, named such because where it used to roam, the Atlas Mountains of hmm. North Africa. 
If you're wondering how a big fuzzy bear would have lived in Africa, a bear in Africa not be too acquainted with the Atlas Mountains. Yeah. It shares a pretty temperate climate with the rest of the Mediterranean. And the further you go up the mountains, the colder it gets. In fact, it snows regularly near the mountain summits. Are there any other Some bears of these in pictures Africa? pictures of the Atlas look similar to the any. Rockies over here. So it really isn't that unbelievable a bear could live in these African mountains. The bears themselves didn't differ too much from surviving brown bears, which they are believed to be a subspecies of, although it is possible they might be their own separate species of ursine. The Atlas bear was brownish black, so with reddish-orange fur on the nose. underside. It was stockier oh, than an it. average American black bear, with shorter claws and muzzles. So why did the Atlas bear die off? Well, like many other things in the Mediterranean Us? world, the Romans really put them mm -hmm. in a sticky situation. I will admit, bears are cool, but the Romans thought they were cool enough to take thousands away from the Atlas Mountains to fight for their entertainment. <laughs> in the Colosseum and other arenas around the Roman Empire, Atlas bears were imported, encaged, and starved in order to make them more desperate fighters, and then unleashed on some other animal or Christian, so... but never to return to their mountains. They were the Romans' love for their blood sport bled the Atlas bear population dry. It would shamble on for many more centuries in greatly reduced numbers, and the final one would be hunted down and killed in the 19th century. And now for maybe one of the more famous ancient animals lost to time, the auric. Oryx, once found across Eurasia, really strike me as one of the greatest losses in terms of extinct animals. The fact that these giants used to roam the wild lands of Europe, Uruk, as in like nowadays the, the city largest Ur? herbivore in most of Europe is a deer, would be a spectacle. And the fact that it is so interwoven in ancient human culture, only to be snuffed at by modern times once more puts a damper on things. To get into specifics, Oryx were large, wild bovines who lived similar to most of its relatives. They would live in herds numbering no more than 30 members. In these herds, both sexes would fight and display for social status with others, hmm. and during mating seasons, males would engage in deadly battles for the right to reproduce. Besides these sometimes fatal battles, an adult auric in Europe had nearly nothing to fear. That's like the Large best. Large auric could grow 1.8 meters at the shoulder could, uh, and could weigh 700 with? to 1,000 kilograms. Couldn't draw it up. Although more ancient aurochs have been estimated to weigh an immense metric ton and a half. It For looked like something I'd find in Skyrim, low res. Weighs about 250 to 300 kilos. The only thing that could weigh up to an auric would have been a very large bull moose and wisens. Moose freak me European out. European bison. Outside of Europe, it is I'll possible have to talk about adult auric would be slain by large predators like the tiger. Yeah. But because of their huge size and menacing set of horns, a European auric might only be threatened by predators if it were sick or a calf, who were preyed upon by wolves and bears. Unkillable herds of healthy oryx would have roamed Europe and been a key part in sustaining biodiversity. These grazers would have kept pockets of Europe free from the ever-encompassing forest, providing a habitat for many plants and animals. To humanity as well, oryx were invaluable. It's pretty hard not to notice, but cattle, arguably the most important domesticated animal, are descended from the wild oryx. The two different types of cattle the humped zebu and the torn cattle most are familiar with were actually domesticated independently of each other, the former being bred from the Indian auric subspecies and the latter from the Eurasian variety. Ever since That's we why they have the spots? those first auric, cattle have been a cornerstone of civilization. Forget democracy or laws. Did that stuff ever plow your fields or make milkshakes for you? Only with the help of our bovine friends could we have any of that. Culturally, oryx have always been revered by humans. They appear in our cave paintings, figurines, and other works of art. Caesar wrote of them as animals, quote, a little below the size of an elephant, and the Romans would later feature them in their arenas. In Greek mythology, it is said Zeus took the form of a bull oryx during the creation of Europe. Of course, for how respected and necessary these animals were, they did eventually go extinct. The main cause for their extinction was, and Tell me if you've heard this before. Overhunting and loss of habitat to their domesticated descendants, yep. along with the spread of various diseases due to contact with cattle. The oryx range would slowly grow smaller and smaller until the last few oryx lived in Eastern Europe, where they were exclusively hunted by royalty. The final oryx died of natural causes in Poland in the year 1627. Wow. And yet another amazing animal would be lost to time. But there is hope for the oryx. 
Because of oryx being extinct and European cattle farming becoming less popular, those unique areas of open pastures might disappear within Europe, along with all the diverse wildlife which call it home. A certain solution would involve bringing back the oryx. The Dutch Taurus program aims to breed back the oryx, or technically an animal very genetically and physically That's similar awesome. to the oryx, from certain breeds of cattle. Their final hope is to leave these oryx populations and let them be reclaimed by European nature. To roam Just let them roam? Herds uh, that's amazing. Habitats. That's they amazing. They had a hand in keeping clear of forest. So far, the program now has a few hundred animals they are able to work with, and the final goal is to be completed in 20 years. So maybe in our lifetime we will see the ancient oryx return to Europe. Of course, there are many animals I did not mention who went extinct before modern times that ancient people may have known about. But I wanted to keep this to animals that the ancient Eurasian world knew of. Still, even these more speculative ideas are fun to explore. Is it possible the ancient Romans heard tales of the giant elephant bird native to a mysterious, far-off African island? Did the merchants of Timbuktu ever encounter the now long-gone quagga, the zebra relative native to South Africa? Could the people of the Indian Ocean know of the giant host's eagle of New Zealand and the moa it hunted? Yeah. All Probably. fantastical speculation, but the thought of it happening makes the ancient world Sad seem we much more we never amazing. Will. Once more, it sort of sucks all these creatures died out long before you and I could ever have seen them, but at least they existed for ancient man, where these fantastical they animals existed and we have records. Seem and that that's much what's more great. wondrous. Not well, all of them. The channel sort of blew up in between this and the last upload, so to all my new subscribers and viewers, welcome aboard. As you can see, I have a real love of history alongside my love for paleontology and zoology. Cool! So I thought combining the two passions would make for a good video. And I hope it's received well. As always, thanks for the artwork, photos, and footage I used to make this. And thank you for watching. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to subscribe to this channel. I definitely learned quite a bit. But I especially learned, um, what was it that I learned? <laughs> now I have to use my memory. But, uh, that there was bears in, not in America, not, you know, that were in, um, like, was it the Asiatic countries? I forget. But the one that really got me was the, the, the that, the Syrian elephant, I think. Um, right? Is that what got me? I have to make sure. Because I knew about the lions. I really did. Um. But the, um, the, uh, Hannibal part where he rode it into battle I've heard that story um but I didn't realize that he could have been um riding a very very rare and very endangered species and that's pretty cool pretty sad but pretty cool there's something else I learned about the fucking goddamn elephants I must know. Well, as the lion is the elephant. Now, most people know their relatives was size. Measuring in at 3.5 meters at the shoulder. Was it just the this? The average Syrian elephant would have been as tall as the, the largest fascinated me. Indian elephants. The Syrian elephant would seem to go extinct in their environment by the year 700 BCE. Oh, and also that lions, um, is it the lions that still live in Asia? I didn't know that. Like, still, what, what where was it? I don't want to mince my words here. Nineteen sixty-three. India is a similar story to the rest of Asia. And as gunpowder spread, lion numbers dwindled. Yet lions would actually remain in India until, well, 
the present day. Okay, yeah. Yep. That yep. that was what what I learned. I learned a lot, but that was the first thing I learned. And that's really interesting to me because I did not think they lived anywhere else except Africa. So, there we go. Uh, thank you to everybody who tuned in. And, of course, I'll see you later.